sweet morning air, the warmth of a young fox's breath, bright yellow magnolia pollen on bees' legs, earthworms and voles tunneling beneath the spring blooming lilacs, leaves unfurling into the sun's heat. The wood phoebe's tender call to his mate, the rabbit munching the wild asparagus stems, the long-legged spider creating her web in the sourwood tree, pulling from her body the finest of threads. And as the day ends, a lunar moth hatches in the leaf litter, spreading <coughs> pale green wings to the rising moon. It is a time a life aloof from the constant coaxing of human wants. I watch, feeling blessed to have this peace where the world seems full of ancient music. Oh, Great for that. that. It goes with your music. But the money yes, goes it goes with, with your book. Your oh, book. yeah. The rabbits yes. eat asparagus? Pardon? The rabbits eat asparagus? Yeah. Oh, rabbits so. eat anything. No, no one. <laughs> You said munching. Munching. Bro when did nibbling. I say munching? Munching. That the rabbit was nibbling. Is nibbling. Sorry, I didn't mean to. You say read munching for nibbling. nibbling. Did I really say yeah. munching? Yeah. You really did. Oh, I did. Well, it's a little. 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 You've painted a beautiful yeah. experience. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, I think Phoebe, though, does have a P H O E B E. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But P H O E. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, but it's so nicely observed, Joy. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's just mm -hmm. lovely. And too bad you could have a Cecropius moth in there too, because that's a. That's the big brown one. That you see with the, the Cecropius moth, yeah. Well, I found a million cicadas yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shells. Cicada shells. Oh, you did? Oh, yes. I they're know. only two. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Are they smaller this year? No, they're the, 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 the shell. That's the, that's the larvae that's, and they push out oh, okay. and they expand and then they push out the wings and then they harden. So they, they trip about triple in size, what did you say, triple in size from the... I haven't seen any of the shells. Turn the ground. Mm -hmm. They're not attached to anything. Mm -hmm. so you know, we could pretty well silent. rename yeah. this the Nature Discussion Group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, we had, had a nice poem amid, amidst yeah. all of this. Yeah, it, it got our brains going in the natural... But also having that, those, all those foxes staring you know, at me. I, I some, yeah, I was just going to say uh, the, uh, the warmth of a young fox breath. Um, it, sometimes I feel like we need to read a poem a second time just to really oh, well, let it sink in. Mm -hmm. that, uh, Would you mind doing that just yes. one more time? No, I don't. Remember munching and nibbling. <laughs> we'll see what comes up. Okay. No, I... The warmth <laughs> of a young fox breath. Bright yellow magnolia <laughs> pollen on bees' legs, earthworms and voles tunneling beneath the spring blooming lilacs, leaves unfurling into the sun's heat, the wood phoebe's tender call to his mate, the rabbit nibbling at wild asparagus stems, <laughs> the long legged spider creating her web in the sourwood tree by pulling pulling from her body the finest of threads. And as the day ends, a luna moth hatches in a leaf litter, spreading pale green wings to the rising moon. It is time and life <laughs> aloof from the constant coaxing of human wants. I watch, feeling blessed <coughs> to have this peace where the world seems full of ancient music. It's even better than taking them around. Thank you. It really, it, we, I seem to hear the nuances so much better in the second reading. Uh, I love, I still love that ancient music at the very, very end. Um, yeah, it's like the first time through we read a poem, 
some of the words catch more than others, and then the second reading, you begin to hear it in full better, it seems. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of movies I sometimes watch a second time, and I think, oh my God, I missed that entirely, you know. It, thank you for doing that, I really love that poem. So uh, this time she added an A. Well, she did that last she, time. I did. And then she overlooked an A sometime later on and so on. <laughs> but the poem remains the same. She is yeah. saying the poem right. and the fact that a few words or letter can be altered mm -hmm. doesn't change the poem. Right. No. Right. Well, it, it did in the sense, it was the difference between nibbling and munching. Nibbling and munching. That, that is a different picture. The nibbling is more toothy, isn't it? Yes. Toothy? I think nibbling has a better sound. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a little more, it's a little more, it's a little more, um, did you say toothy? Toothy. Yeah, so it's, a little, <laughs> it's a little more lackadaisical. You know, it's more well, instead of your mold, right? Right. 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 I think you, right. you, you They're you not munchers. The rabbits don't have munching teeth. They, they're nibblers. Yeah, yeah Patricia has cleared it up. The munching is molars, yeah. Yeah. whereas the nibbling is incisors. Right. I realize I now I've never looked in a yet. rabbit's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're everybody, they're everybody incisors, so they have to eat. Yeah, they have to yeah. keep eating to keep the teeth to them to the, the, the sanded down, as it were, or otherwise they get in serious trouble. I just wanted you to see or feel with me all of this stuff that goes on around us that we don't take time yeah. to experience. Well, it's like, I don't get, like, April was that a cruise. I don't take time. April was a cruise fun, reading a lot of kind of dead ground, we see memory and desire, strewing dollars with, dollars with spring rain. I really like that ancient music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it is ancient. You know, the old genotype playing is ancient music. We see the little chromosomes are firing off their orders and directions. What's the Norman Mailer book? Ancient. <coughs> <coughs> um, Norman Mailer's book. Yeah, right. Ancient something or other. Music? No. no Egyptian? No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, who's next? Someone else must have written a poem. Are you next? Or? Would you like to be next, Kathy? No. Well, I'll be, okay. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's interesting. I had seen this on a um, workshop where the person to the left, say, of the poet reads the poem. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting, certainly, for the poet. To hear. to hear that. Though sometimes you get somebody who, um, at a workshop, are you too messing with him? Can I have him? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> he read this poem, and other people kept saying, he doesn't say that on my paper. I don't, I just, doesn't have those words. And I said, it doesn't say it on my paper either. He has <laughs> changed the entire poem as he read it. And not for the better. No, well, so you, you have to make rules. I'm going to read, read, read the second one first. Okay. okay. Wildness. Honor the wild within and without. For wildness is vanishing as greediness sprouts. Hmm. So many people take up so much earth that animals suffer and they were here first. Mm -hmm. How can we share in these swift waning years by honoring wild ones and holding them there. Wow. Uh, holding them D-E-E-R. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, it would be those deer. Yeah. <laughs> and the second, the other one is... The wild, wait, before you leave. Uh -huh. the, the wild, the word, has kind of uh, alternate connotations uh, where your you just mean wild in the sense of wilderness, whereas many use it wild as being, you know, crazy uh, kind of stuff, you know? And yeah. so, uh, 
Anyway, I, I sort of began wondering if you were going in that direction. Oh, she's uh, where the wild things are. <laughs> yeah, right. And they mashed their terrible teeth and drowned it. Yeah, and my son Rick wrote a dodgio for strings, and I oh. just wanted to share that. Beethoven was chopping wood with Emmanuel's axe <laughs> when the handle of a rug. <laughs> Frustrated, he went back to the local pub and listened to a lot of bar talk, <laughs> reminding the bartender to fill up glass. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to play hide and seek? A drunk patron yelled. I can't find my shoe, Mom. Wait, you, <laughs> you skipped a lot. As he was leaving. Oh, I thought I did something wrong. <laughs> oh, a drunk patron yelled as he was no, leaving. No. no, Okay, wait a minute. As he, as was, he leaving. was leaving, Beethoven exclaimed, I can't find my shoe, Mom. The barber found it without laces. So he went to his adagio for strings. A thankful <laughs> Beethoven was heard to say, if it weren't for Elise, I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> <laughs> that is so clever. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Good job. Rick, Rick is always doing plays on words. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How old was you when you wrote that? Hmm? How old was you when you wrote that? Uh, that 52? It, it was years just ago. three years ago. He's, uh, oh God, how old is he? <laughs> I'll give us a, I don't know. He's in his fifties. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is the do, is the Dodge Geo a Dodge? The Dodge know. Geo. Yeah. It is. It, there is, it a, is a Dodge. I know there's a Geo car, but I didn't know whether it was made by Dodge but, Motors or not. A, and I don't care. Oh, I don't know I, either. I, no, yeah. I had a. Is it? I had a Geo. And it was a. It's made by General Motors or something. Isn't General it? Or something. It's not a dog. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Dog is primarily trucks, and it was by my little um, Gia was a little thing like my Honda Fit. I any car, any bitty car. Yeah. My self is good. Well, tell them we really enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah, it was great. Visited their mom, but now they were back and lying out in the sussing gra grass, discussing the weight of the moon's total mass and wondering how a moon bite would taste, like music, like licorice, like ivory paste. One said, okay guys, enough goofing around, let's get up a game of has Thomas been found? And they rounded up Murdies and Rissies and Merms who were all out searching for Pops Pickle Worms. <laughs> <laughs> Popsicle worms. Popsicle. 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 Popsicle Globbery slime or stingerful wasps or thistles or dirt. They not only taste nasty, they're prickly and hurt the inside of my mouth and my belly as well. And that's as far as I got. Oh, no, 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 you know, the next line. Yeah, yeah. the next line. Yeah, the next line. Well, I thought of the uh, next line because I well. thought people keep saying, oh, this is such a good really thing. really teasing us here. <laughs> what, what was the line you thought of? Well, it ended in hell. hell. But um, yeah. oh okay. And, 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 yeah, just because it rhymes with well. <laughs> but I know people keep saying this is a good thing for children, so maybe I better change it. So I didn't go to sleep. sleep. What are merms? I think you're onto something hot here. It's imaginary. <laughs> I'm not sure. imaginary. What are merms? They're whatever you want them to be. <laughs> oh, one of those magical ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're going to ask what are merms, you have to ask what are great yellow beelugs that are actually black, and what are um, the murdies and the rissies, and what are what all these what other creatures? What is what is sassafras grass? That's the sound it makes. It goes. <laughs> 
That's wonderful. You're lying there in the grass, and it's... <laughs> this is a fascinating something. It does sound kind of snake-like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the, the grass in the breeze. Yeah. So when tell me, when you write these different characters... Am I sober? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You never say <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do you picture an image? Not really. A lot of people say when they hear this or read it, they get these pictures in their minds, and I don't know that I really do that. You know, the one where they're floating across the pond on the sycamore leaf, and uh -huh. uh, I'm more caught up in the words. You yeah. don't see things. You hear words or hear sounds or something. Yeah, like that. basically. Yeah. I. Um, Maybe if I, I don't know. I, yeah, but, uh, I have sort of a, a nebulous picture of them, and that's not really concrete and high, high resolution. Well, it's interesting because two different artist types have uh, <coughs> made a couple sketches for different, neither of which seemed to me to Very look different. like what came to mind, if anything came to mind. And they were very different. You know, this one is this way, and this one is very different. One. Remember, years ago, Joy made up dindamines and made clay. I guess you don't remember. I don't. That was back in that. Time. The mushroom people. Oh. Mushroom people oh. called dindamines, right. and she made little clay. Sorry, clay yeah. models of them, and uh -huh. uh, Borcher drew up a. Story or something of well, it. Uh, uh, an illustration for it. And I had a dog who loved eating bumblebees. I mean, I mean honeybees. No. And they, and they yeah. all, I was just dumb her, but she would still go up to them like, like they were absolutely wonderful. And, uh, I must have been addicted to it. There's something about it. I don't know. What did you want to ask? Uh, Ruby. Ruby. What, 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 how does Ruby fit in? Well, it's because. This, to make a long story short, it's impossible. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get my brother on Medicaid, and the woman I, my contact with uh, the VA and Medicaid or whatever it is, is named Ruby Woodfox. And I just loved her name. Oh, <laughs> I said, May I use your name in poem? And she said, what? Well, well, <laughs> well, I'm saying, in what respect did she? <laughs> no, it, it, it is a lovely name. It it's, is. It's, it's Wait till she find out, finds out she is about to slurp up a bunch of... Uh, no, she's not going to slurp up a bunch of... She's bad, they hurt their mouths. She's not going to do it again. The, uh, the last two lines are more about the pond. Mm -hmm. They rounded up Murdies and Risses and Merms who were all out searching for pop pickle worms um, had been out searching? No, they were out there and they went out to find them. You, I mean, you see I'm trying to distance the two. The well, if they rounded them up, they weren't doing, been doing it anymore. There's a sort of a Well, no, a but tense. you would say... <coughs> Yeah, had been more searching. For they months. they yeah. rounded up the cows that were all out in the pasture. I'm just. It was just an they idea. They had been oh. out in the pasture, but they're now not they there any ruins. The rhythm. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Well, it does confuse tense a little yeah. bit. Well, but, I don't think it does, but I yeah. can. You know, the, yeah. But I if, if I don't you, picture. These pictures. When I hear you read it or read it, I don't picture things. I I just do the sound. Mm -hmm. I just do the sound. Well, I think. You, you have to get down to the rough size of them as far as just sort of. Well, you know, yeah, I've got little things in there, but I wouldn't know a um, Murdy from a Rissy if it came in the door. <laughs> Somehow they must be there though, but. Yeah. Some have big eyes and some have small eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and some have no eyes. Some have Let's see. The same setting. It, it's the Basically, yes. Yeah. The same, same world. Same yeah, world. Of um, Tullaby Park. Tullaby Pond. Uh, my grandmother's name was Murdy. Oh. But We're not done yet. Oh, <laughs> of course. So I did conjure up a myrtle. Kind of 
picture. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> Which poem? Uh, let's start with the writer's almanac on the other side. Uh, this this whole presentation of mine was stimulated by Felix's last thing, last time. He had this ridiculous hogwash and inane and whatever, if you remember. And so I thought that was pretty good. Oh, I missed that. Pretty good thought about hogwash and inane. Pass, pass Felix's last poem over so I could check it out. Oh, we have to read his poem. Then you can read that. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so, uh, with that in mind, I came across this poem on the Writer's Almanac for May the 9th. And this is a poem entitled County Fair, and it is by Charles Simic, who is an extremely well known, much published, many merits, and so forth. I mean, he is a He's well a po published, a well established. Poet. Okay. Okay. I, I figure I gotta give his credentials before I read what he <laughs> offers. <laughs> I like hotel insomnia. <laughs> if you didn't see the six legged dog, it doesn't matter. We're at the county fair. Okay, country fair. If you didn't see the six legged dog, it doesn't matter. We did, and he mostly lay in the corner. As for the extra legs, one got used to them quickly and thought of other things, like, what a cold, dark night to be out at the fair. Then the keeper threw a stick, and the dog went after it on four legs, the other two flapping behind, which made one girl shriek with laughter. She was drunk, <coughs> and so was the man who kept kissing her neck. The dog got the stick and looked back at us, and that was the whole show. So it's fine for the dog. Now this is an eminent Weird. poem by an eminent poet. And, you know, it's challenged that there's, there's some depth in there, isn't there? Don't, yeah. you, don't you get the feel the that legs? really this no, is... No, 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 it's fine for the dog. That was the main thing. Some, there's deep philosophical meaning somewhere buried in this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure. There must be. I think you're Because me. Charles Simic wrote it. It's got to be for, good. For him. <laughs> The, the man kissing that <laughs> drunk woman on the neck is the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was, he was doing the kissing, so perhaps that was the whole show. I know. Yes. Sex always trumps. That's what I do to the dog pipe. Don't mention that name again. Don't mention that name again. No? The legs flop behind. No, I, 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 I do the dog look back. I going. think the dog look Even. back at us is the most important. But it is. I kept on going. My, my you mind. got the stick and look back. What's next? Yeah. You kept on going. But that was the whole show. Yeah. The dog waited for something more, and all there was was kissing on neck. <laughs> So yeah, there you go. Sure. Just think about it. <laughs> it. It could have been called the banality of life. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> the banal country fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, in light of Felix and what, what, that, well, well, this this poet man who you say has many credos to his <laughs> credentials. Yeah. Right, he's got a trump, a chest full of medals. Yeah. Picture uh, the generalissimo. Do you think he should keep on writing? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got an iron grip on the publisher. <laughs> and so he keeps writing, and the publisher has to publish it, I guess. Another, another but Writer's Almanac did not have to adapt it. So we have to question Garrison. You know, what did you have in mind when you got it, gave us this, you know? Yeah. Okay. So in light of all that crap and whatever, <laughs> <laughs> we have the poem inane. Is it pain or gain? Chattering about a lot of the trivial can make our gathering quite convivial. Should the <laughs> conversation turn to something spooky, Let's call time and have another cookie. <laughs> <laughs> At times we're bound to turn to the absurd, but that can be altered by the choice of a word. 
And should you turn to discussing <laughs> Trump, bend over and we'll paddle you on your rump. <laughs> or if we slant into the ridiculous, let's enjoy and laugh, not make a fuss. When shading into the supernatural, we can halt and have a taffy pull. <laughs> if one shows off his knowledge, rare and makes us bored, we'll stop right there. If the drift should toward the ghastly creep, patience may find the subject quite deep. In summary, when all goes round and round, we may be approaching the exceptionally profound. <laughs> Funny <laughs> not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two bases where I think you had the first one. You had too many fun. words. You messed up your rhythm. <laughs> I'm yeah. If, yeah. if you're worried about that. I, I would like to stay in rhythm, but it's sometimes the <laughs> The, the words just get yeah. in the way. Which which couplet was particularly annoying? Yeah. Maybe I'll go home and work on it. Um, or, well, I didn't mark they all them. were, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there were two places, and I didn't mark them in honor. Okay. The one, I think, if the drift should, if the drift toward the ghastly creep, patients might find the subject quite deep. I think you could take out quite, and it would. If the drift should try the ghastly creep. I think it would. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Well, that same couple of two, you you similar of a conversation. To, to something spooky, let's call time and have another like, cookie. You, you, you substitute a different word, I forget which word you substitute the first time. You oh, you he stem, was stem all stem in that word. So <laughs> similar <laughs> over again. <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's... so much different. stuff about conservation that that's what he kept trying to say. <laughs> yeah, right. But we can tell you have a thing about the supernatural. Honestly, a taffy pull instead. <laughs> <laughs> did y'all, I don't know, did it get sent around to everybody the, um, the Garrison Keeler um, version of The Raven that was about Trump? Yes, yes, yes. 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 That yes. was fun. Yes. Yeah, it was, uh, I heard him read it uh, on the radio and then I. <coughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe somebody. So, I mean, there is something about this current political race that is making the absurd look fun. <laughs> well, it's true. The it's true of the, the rational is really it's scarier than hell. It's, it's uh, common. It's how we get along these days. I mean, the rest of the world, I know they're appalled that, that Trump is even considered yeah, mm -hmm. running at all. And scared of them. But, I mean, they, but they, also, they um, can't be more fascinated than we are. But also, I think our boat's got a hole in it, folks. I mean, I'll look at the country, I mean, the same damn thing. Um, Germany, the Philippines, yeah, are elected to right of center people, far right of center people. Who don't yeah. have the brains to put on the pens like, uh, which is facing Italy. You want to work this for me because we don't have too many people and I might oh, okay. have time for me. <laughs> we got you right there. Good. I'm glad you're getting tape this time. Yeah. <laughs> it's only fair. Recalled. Siphoned up and out into no boundaries on a float. This earth offering fearless infant trusting cribless soul to you. Buoyed, cradled and reclaimed back home, melding into the universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Recalled. You recall this from some time past? No, she's saying the Earth's being recalled, I think. Or the infant has been <coughs> recalled. The one from the manger in Bethlehem, that one? No, I didn't pick one. Okay. Just an infant Generic, that baby. dies. Oh. I get it. And is recalled back. I had at first uh, 
called the passing, but I, I like to recall it better. Mm -hmm. And void, I think I, I mispronounced it. I think you need a hyphen between infant and trusting. Infant trusting, oh, okay. You know, I've been messing with diverse and they're kind of casual about run on run on phrases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I may be picking up some good or bad habits on our <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the second one is uh, a new one atop an old one. I started out the first verse is old and the second one is new. My anger. My anger sits inside on fat haunches and comes out at night to eat rats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it also happens that at times it curls up and sleeps the night away. <laughs> Yeah. I couldn't stay with the first verse now. I'm, I'm angry. I'm not that angry. <laughs> that it takes that more energy than is really available anymore, right? That is a great image yeah. though. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean it's so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That mean old nasty thing. <laughs> Do you think the second verse takes away from it or no, adds to no, it? No, no. 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 I but some of the anchor needs to go under abeyance rather than be brought forth and stoked. It definitely is is the flip side of so much of us. Well, I think your first poem is, is quite excellent. Yeah, I do. Well, we were supposed to, they had kind of like a prompt <coughs> which I don't like, but that's the only way to get on. Um, and it was, the prompt was to imagine you're laying on the back and looking at, looking up and experiencing it and describing that in any way that comes to you. And that's what came to me. Yeah. Well, that's what I it takes a little reading. It, does, it doesn't. Uh, uh, get That's you right what? at first. I don't think. Pardon? It it the, the poem. I don't think I saw it at first. I, it took me a couple of times reading it. I don't know if I particularly like the format you have it written in. But I wouldn't change a word of it. I wouldn't change a word. Okay. Where are those damn muses? Or is it uh, those well, damn muses again, but more it's more better, uh, graphics. I wonder if Sophocles ever had intellectual hesitation, especially before consuming his Jimmy Jones, Jimmy Jones cocktail of hemlock. Is the youth of Athens any safer? They have to watch as they further lesson on conforming? Or did Euripides or Homer regret the treatment of Orestes? That whole Jerry Springer family broglio. But there is nothing, nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes is older than dirt, the God made kind. The interweaving of nature, nurture, genetics, free will, and of course the irritating interfering, interfering of those damn intrusive poets and dramatists who twist personas, circumstances, etc. To fill the muse's demands. I wonder where that, where the, um, where those, um, <laughs> original story was. Yeah. That's a hard typeface to read. Yeah, it is. Up. That's, that's, that's <laughs> why I, I switched up, out the real fast. The up original? I think is that what it says? What up. Up original. O P R I. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I could. There's an extra P. I know. Yeah. That's one thing about this typeface. It just throws in any letter. <laughs> well, I didn't, it didn't, didn't underline it at all. So, I mean, I, 
I think the first line of the second stanza is treatment of Orestes. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You, um, you read of. Yeah. I think you read of. I read mean, of Orestes rather than Or. Why don't you read this one over and slowly? Yeah, okay. that's our, I, I wonder if Sophocles ever had intellectual hesitation, especially before consuming his Jimmy Jones cocktail of hemlock. Were the youth of Athens any safer? Did they have to watch? Is a further, further lesson on conforming? Or did Euripides or Homer regret their treatment of Orestes and their whole Jerry Springer family in Broglio? Maybe there really is nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes is older than dirt, the God made kind. The interweaving of nature, nurture, genetics, free will, and of course the irritating interfering of those damn intrusive poets and dramatists who twist personas, circumstances, etc. Fill the muse's demands. I wonder what the original story was. I, I, I don't understand the second line. Jimmy Jones cocktail. Yeah, remember Jimmy Jones caught Jimmy Jones down in um, Uganda, who had who, who had the religious leader who had all that humongous uh, oh. uh, Jones cool Jones yeah, Jones like cocktail. And the, they made cocktail? Yeah. They all had cool cocktail that they killed. Oh, I've forgotten all about well, that. I remember it quite well. Seven hundred people drank. Oh my God! I wonder if it is not ordinarily referred to as James Jones or something. Well, the yeah, Jimmy Jones said, doesn't sound right. When you said Jimmy Jones, I thought of the whatever. Yeah, the down in Athens, Athens and I was thinking, yeah. I was thinking of Athens, Ohio, there yeah. after rather than well, Athens, I'm Greece. Well, yeah. Some, yeah. Something, something is wrong there. Some. Yeah, yeah because it's uh, J the James Jimmy Jones or whatever Jim Jones was for Jim Jones I think is yeah, Jim, yeah. Jim yeah. Jones for mass suicide yeah okay well that's what it is that wasn't Sophocles was not part of mass suicide no, but, um, so, uh, so he just was given hemlock that's, that's enough consuming his poisoned hemlock Hemlock is poison. But, um. Oh, yes. Yeah. He, he, was, he, he was convicted of, of uh, um, corrupting, corrupting the youth of Athens and was forced to commit suicide, just as Jimmy Jones made his, made his followers commit suicide because of his own vanity. Okay, in the Sophies, let, let me ask you in the case of <coughs> Sophocles, who was Jimmy Jones? The people of Athens. I mean, they, they, whoever, whoever, whoever did his trial. So it's the people. <coughs> the judges. Not an individual. Not a <coughs> not a persuasive leader of the group. Hmm? So who well, was the judge that drank hemlock? Sophocles. Hmm? Sophocles was forced to commit suicide. It was for corrupting the youth of Athens. It was Socrates that drank uh, the uh, hemlock. I thought it was Sophocles. Sophocles <laughs> wrote okay, plays. Right. Yeah. I think you should rewrite this and bring it back to us. Okay, and that this is one each of these are okay, one this so pass that to me. Okay, hey, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it's so bossy. I know. Here, Patricia, pass that to Sven. And you can have that one. You can have that one for you. I have this. No, you don't. Oh. It's two pages. Oh, sorry, yeah. It's one poem, oh. two pages. Yeah, yeah. I, had to, I had to do the wrong one for the my hand. <laughs> two sides one. I knew. Two. I'm sorry, but anyways. Springtime itch. First there was the plotting. All that looking out the south windows. My ideas half in, half out. Then the weeding in late April after the forsythia. Dandelions, violets, creeping Charlie, tufts of grass, wee saplings. Next, the trip to White's Mill, the bag of maneuver. Another, even heavier, of compost with microbes. A kind of B12 for the garden, which had to wait to be tilled by Attila, the never sick gardener who had the flu. Small plants carefully selected were crammed in the herb bed. I went away in a plane, came back and waited. It rained and rained some more, the ground too wet. The shed produced tomato cages, bamboo poles for morning glories. My heart began to quicken. A gazing globe, a small cement throbbing. 
the side, the side yard Nelsonville bricks got weeded with my favorite curved wooden handled Japanese knife. Mm. On a cold day in early May, this red truck arrived, his red truck arrived. The loud tiller motor sprang to life before it was walked down the wooden planks off the tailgate into the street, across my yard and into my garden, turning the earth like salad. This former Indian hunting ground, lowland swamp, <laughs> where my son once thrilled to find a forgotten arrowhead. The former clay soil, not dark and textured, ready to welcome home new star starter seeds and hope. One by one, ever so <coughs> gently, the now taller tomato plants got dug up, replanted to their proper spots, watered and caged. Brussels sprouts and basil added. Janie Harmony Marigolds, too. There's room for more. Volunteers, always the surprise. Every year, a different mix, but it's a start as planting. A garden perennial renews my heart, remembering Jefferson's. But though an old man, I am but a young gardener. <laughs> my spirit made light in humble connection. <laughs> On your knees, yeah. On your knees. <laughs> For the great God Pan. Yeah, I, I just love planting, getting Garden. started. Yeah. And watching the change. It's, always fun. it's the same story for every year, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Except it doesn't it's always, it's always, always rain and Attila is not always it's laid up blue. and so on. Yeah. 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 Just mm -hmm. think if he were in they, Boston, he would be called a killer. And that's what he bought. <laughs> <laughs> the tiller, the tiller. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They shed produced tomato cages. Yeah. Uh, I was debating how to yeah. phrase that. I yeah. wanted to say, I took tomato you know? cages, bamboo poles from the shed. Yeah. And I said, I don't like that. No, it is. So right. sweet of you. <laughs> no, I but it is, a little, it is a little awkward. Kind of well, mixing in a little passive or something like that. Yeah. Uh, where it, it, it also happens with the uh, the loud tiller motor sprang to life before it was walked. Right. You know, I mean, that's a passive phrase. Whereas we're interested in maybe it'd be more active to have. But it's not loud. Before it before it springs to life. It's not loud before it springs to life. Well, you have to use the, the passive to, where, before it was walked because it didn't. I hope it didn't come Brand down off that it. truck by itself. <laughs> no, the uh, guy started it and walked it down. Attila. Was his yeah. name really Attila? Yes, honest to God. Mm -hmm. Who would name their child Attila? Attila Mrs. Horvath. Hun. Any old Hun. Mrs. Hun. Yeah. It was a Hungarian family. <coughs> Isn't that great? Tall and wiry, mm -hmm. just skin and bone. I'm telling you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he does Any old uh, yard work at my sister's house, not my sister's place. <laughs> my sister's house. <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. He's very quick and very efficient. Normally gets on a job just quick as a wink, you know. But in fact. This is the first I've known him for years. I've never heard of him being sick in my life, except for just recently. We all have our frailties. I know, I know, yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. No, there, I know with passive voice, you, it's, we're generally urged to avoid it, but it in fact is not a total no, no. You can mix it at times. It's sometimes. Well, it's just that Jean Kilpatrick, the wonderful chap who wrote the the poem that was so hateful, said so you have to hear what it sounds like too. You mean you can always you can always bend bend the laws of grammar without you know, without causing the universe to fall apart in a, in a, in a shatter of laying in line. I, I, like, I, like, I think I think just like with it. Uh, Patricia's rooms, beams, and what, what's it call it? You have to have a plasticity in poetry that allows you to create what you want to create, whether what you, what you have to. It's not a diagram of a freaking sentence, 
where you got all your verbs, adverbs, and adjectives out in a row, you need some where the heart beats. Part of the spring experience is things happening. You know, as, as though we are the passive observer, observer of the, the spring happening. We're contributing to it, but also it's happening. You know? And so, yeah, in happens, that way... It happens faster than I can... <laughs> yeah, the, the weeds, the weeds really part. take off. Yeah, the, the weeds go right down. <laughs> well, but. I was working out in my yard yesterday and I was afraid to sit still for very long because I was afraid they'd get me. Feed me, Seymour. Feed me now. These rains really do it. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the grass, thank God my yard is now mowed. I think it's mowed for the past few days. But it's so darn green and so darn pretty. It's just wonderful. Why don't you read yours again? Okay. Because you think I was too soft still? Oh, you were that's fine. not why I'm asking. You, Jeez, we okay. enjoyed uh, yes. okay. Joy's again. Okay. Springtime itch. First there was the plotting, all that looking out, the south windows, my ideas half in, half out. Then the weeding in late April after the forsythia. Dandelions, violets, creeping Charlie, tufts of grass, wee saplings. Next the trip to White's Mill, the bag of manure, another even heavier of compost with microbes a kind of B12 for the garden, which had to wait to be tilled by Attila, the never sick gardener who had the flu. Small plants carefully selected were crammed in the herb bed. I went away in a plane, came back and waited. It rained and rained some more, the ground too wet. The shed produced tomato cages, bamboo poles for morning glories. My heart began to quicken, a gazing globe, a small cement robin. The side yard Nelsonville bricks got weeded with my favorite curved wooden handled Japanese knife. On a cold day in early May, his red truck arrived. The loud tiller motor sprang to life before it was walked down the wooden planks off the tailgate into the street across my yard and into my garden, turning the earth like salad. This former Indian hunting ground lowland swamp, where my son once thrilled to find a forgotten arrowhead. The former clay soil now dark and textured, ready to welcome new starters, seeds, and hope. One by one, ever so <coughs> The now taller tomato plants got dug up, replanted to their proper spots, watered and caged. Brussels sprouts and basil added. Janie Harmony marigolds, too. There's room for more. Volunteers always the surprise. Every year, a different mix. But it's a start as planting. A garden perennial renews my heart, remembering Jefferson's but though an old man, I am but a young gardener. My spirit made light in humble connection. Where did you find that quote? When? You know, I'll tell you where I first heard, saw that. Carl Runcer, who has his oak tree press, you've seen his stationery. He has, he has a plate and a wonderful old illustration with that quote beneath it. Uh, yeah. Well, I've heard it before, but I didn't, I didn't know it was Jefferson, but I, didn't, I haven't thought about it, but it's, it's a wonderful quote. Yeah, it comes at the end of a longer quote uh, about the garden being his delight uh, and the most delightful occupation, working yeah. in the garden. Yeah. It sounds very familiar. I think I ran into the quote somewhere else recently. Yeah. 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 Just just a few days ago somewhere. It was totally easy to find on when I googled it, you know. Um, Monticello uh, has it. It's very apt. Yeah. I thought so. I kind of wanted to put in that I was a woman, not a man, but uh, I thought what the hell. I I was wondering uh, in the second stanza, second line 
plane that you're talking about things that maybe a plane in the geographic sense or something. In other words, I wonder <laughs> if an airplane. I flew. Yeah, I flew away in a plane. I flew away in a plane or in an airplane, I think, just to Long. avoid that. Long. Oh, I, I, I thought, I didn't know really what plane referred to because... Capitalize it, it then. It, no. Don't Was it an airplane? Okay, an airplane. No, it's too long. But flew. I flew away. I thought yeah, about away. I went away to Chicago. Yeah. No, no, I flew away in a plane, came back and waited. Or you could say a plane took me away and then I came back and waited. Yes. That is more complicated. Yes. Than I think I flew away in a plane and came back and waited. Actually I didn't I assumed you were in an airplane. Yes, yeah, so did I. I, I, I didn't no have any thought of sure planes. I knew about your trips so that it helped back me a bit more so no, I flew, I flew away in a plane, came back and waited. I just wanted to include all these things that prevented it from coming to, to happen as weekly really? as I wanted it to. Yes, you want it right here, yeah. right now, and finish. <clears throat> uh, so, something like, I traveled away would capture the meaning no. what you mean, because you were no longer there, and the fact that you had traveled away left the garden by itself. Yeah. But flew away is, 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 is succinct enough for to say she was absent and not interfering in the normal progression of green things. And it's cool whether or not it was interfering with everything. Well, Being real fast. I'll, I'll think about it. I really, I like, I went away, I came back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think those are fine. Whatever happens on how you did it, I would make sure I maintain that thought, mm -hmm. that, those two thoughts. Yeah. I was wondering about a couple of hyphens. Yeah. Uh, Attila, the never sick gardener, and in the next stanza, the last right. line, wooden handled Japanese knife. Right. Well, um, okay. Yeah. You know, also, with the side hyphen yard. I would take out in the second stanza of the line, my heart began to quicken. I don't know what that does. I, I got excited about the stuff. Well, tell me what you got excited about. The garden stuff. Tell me well, what you got The shed, Purdue, the cages, the bamboo poles. Tell me, got me Tell excited. me what happened. Uh, but my heart began to quicken. That's, uh, would it go up? Yeah, you know, two points or what? Do any of you live on May Avenue? Pardon? Any, any of you live on May Avenue? No, I drive up and down May. So you know the house with that little anybody around, garden in it, different yard. There's all the crap in it. I don't yeah. think I've paid any. Well, it's, it's, it's it, the 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 plants in it are pretty nice. But they also have some uh, you know, gazing globe, some plastic. Oh well. Fabulous. Yeah, Shakuna Sangu and all that. Uh, people probably look at my garden and think, what the hell? Uh, I think that. And then other people say, I love your garden because it's got all those flowers in it. Well, that's because I hadn't taken out the weeds and they're blooming. <laughs> the weeds, weeds are happy. Oh, I just said. The shed gave birth to tomato cages <laughs> no. and bamboo poles, and so your heart began to quicken at the sight of the new birth. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm glad. <laughs> glad you admit it. In a way, it seems to me your second stanza is only there to keep the last line of the first stanza and the first line of the third stanza apart. Oh my gosh. <laughs> eh? What? Oh. <laughs> well, Something happened. Yeah, I think that the one point that she may or may not be making when you say on a cold day in May his red truck arrived, I had to think back to Attila. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, your reference for that pronoun was not clear. Okay. So I could put Attila again. No. It could have been the uh, the garden. The Japanese knives truck. Yeah. Some Japanese 
drove up with his knife. <laughs> I thought of birth uh, when you read the second line, my idea's half in, half out. And then... That's like a great old life that. Yeah, right. Second line. Uh, okay. the, the very beginning. This is beginning to sound like call the midwife. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, uh, <laughs> That's such an entertaining show. We did enjoy it. I must say, your poem. Very, uh, very good. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe I'll rewrite some parts too. <laughs> there seems to be some satisfaction in following exactly what happened rather than uh, poetry making. Right, right. It, I thought, gosh, Ruth, this is just a damn list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're sounding like Larry. No, <laughs> it it's like more Larry. satisfying, right? Yeah, I mean, I as I began to, you know, where did it start? Was it was it the weeding first? No, it wasn't. It was the potting. What am I going to do? You know. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it, it, all the stuff that goes into it. And I really only mentioned half of, of what I ended up doing. You know, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's so consuming, and it gets you outside. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing in the world. Okay, your, your essay assignment is to compare and contrast springtime itch with country fair. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I've got to work some sex in this. <laughs> I wasn't aware of their development. What has developed? Yeah. You know, the country fair developed and the springtime itch <laughs> I wasn't developed. Aware, I wasn't aware people raised uh, morning glories. Oh, well, well. Of course you do. You know, down on the west side, they've got a huge bamboo stand, enormously big. And they periodically have all these wonderfully long bamboo poles. And what I discovered is that if I put, I have this back porch that it's just a, a little overhang like this. It's almost like a Art Deco movie thing. But anyways, if I put these bamboo poles at an angle going up to it, the uh, morning glories, if I train them, they'll grow up and I've got these blue uh, oh, it's really beautiful. Oh, you know, I just love it. Well, they're they're, they're a lovely weed, the morning glories. Yeah. Well, but the ones that are weed, that's actually those aren't morning glories. Those are, um, among other things, they're called devil's garters or devil's guts. But they're. Um, <coughs> I've never heard of that. Bindweed. Bindweed. Yeah. Uh, they resemble the flowers. They resemble morning glories. Right. Uh, they can be white with pink stripes. Yeah, and they, they are invasive. They really are. Uh, yeah. Yes, you don't want it in your body. Yeah. Yeah. But morning glories are beautiful. Yes. Yeah, the blue. Yeah. I like, I'm partial to the blue. You should bring us a photograph of a blue flower. Right? Yeah. The yeah. railroad vine. Railroad vine. Railroad vine. I have, um, I have started.